Well, disassembling the Victor Victrola 35 motor. I know it's bits and pieces of greasy nonsense, but this isn't that bad, actually. That grease is still fairly liquid. It's not really as chunky and dry as I generally find. And the reason for this is that the spring, main spring as you can see there, apparently has been replaced. It's not a Victor original. It still has quite a bit of, uh, for lack of a better word, spring feeling to it, strength to it. Unusual only in that this came out of a machine that was really derelict. It's obviously been abandoned somewhere for a very long time, yet whoever had the machine had had work done to it. They had a uh, brand new mainspring put in there, and it uh, was a good brand, whatever it was, and it's still in good shape. But you can see what I meant when I said in an earlier video, this is kind of like a pancake motor. These were designed for the smaller box portables, like the Victor Victrola 35. Variations of this would be used in the 260, 2-60, I should say, and uh, the 2-55, among others. They're made to be low profile. Instead of, you know, being having a high tower, all of that, everything is sort of squished down onto it. And they rely on set screws to hold them together. This is important. I mentioned this before. You see the screws here. This is a set screw. These little tiny screws are for your spring. There's the ball bearing that goes under the main shaft. Another set screw. And if these screws come loose, everything falls apart. Everything falls out. You have a set screw that goes here that holds on the winding shaft. Whoops, right there. That holds on your winding shaft. That was loose on this. That was definitely loose. This, this gear does not have a set screw. It is pressed in. Don't mess with it. Clean it, but leave it alone. And where's the other one? Okay, in here, in here goes this gear. And I left the set screw in this one so you can see it. See the set screw there? That set screw was loose. This gear was loose and eventually it would have fallen apart and you would have been able to lift the turntable with the shaft completely off of the machine. Not good. Here's another one. Set screw. This would just go right out of the machine if the screw got loose and this one was also loose. Every set screw in this was loose. This little collar right here. Let's see if I can mask. A bit of a bright sunshine here today. But... See that collar? Can you see the screw? Or is it too greasy? There we go. That's the set screw. Right there, it was loose. That set screw, that little collar, goes on the bottom here. And where's the shaft? This shaft, right here, goes through from the other side. You know, from this side. That goes down through there, your spring attaches to around it. And that set screw sits right on there. It clamps on to that little bit coming out there. And if that screw gets loose, that collar falls out. This entire spring barrel crashes in down into the bottom of the box. And now you have to take the whole thing apart to fix it. So, periodic maintenance on a Victor Victrola 35, like any Victrola, is very important. You have to make sure those set screws remain snug. Don't try to super tighten them. That's only going to strip out the screw, break the screw, or cause other problems. Just snug them. Snug them tight, that's all. So they're not loose and they're not in danger of coming out. If you do that periodically, then you won't have any problems, at least not with screws falling out. Now, if you're going to start working on Victrola, you know, doing Victrola springs, that kind of thing, I cannot think of an easier spring than this one. There's no little rivets in there that you have to hook an eye onto before you can start winding the spring into. There isn't even a little folded piece of metal that a hooked spring would hook into. Those are pretty easy, too. Hook into so you can wind it in. What this has is this little ear that comes off of the top of the barrel and that catches the hook. So all you have to do is just wind the spring in there making sure it's going in the right direction because this one you can accidentally wind it in in the wrong direction if you're not paying attention. Don't do that. Pay attention. What I like to do is even though I've done this a thousand times I still take a picture of the direction of the spring 
with a digital camera doesn't cost anything just snap a picture with your phone whatever so you can see the the rotation of spring which way the spring goes in there and put it back the same way and double check it when you're done before you put all the grease in now some people like to grease the spring before they put it in I find that extremely messy and extremely dangerous because a greased up spring can get away from you very easily okay it's hard enough taking them out when they're greasy Putting the back in, especially if it's a new spring with a lot of tension, if that thing's all greased up, you can get away from you, especially if you're not used to it. So I put them in dry, and then I grease them. I add the grease and I add some uh, STP lube when it's in there. And then I crank it up when it's all in back together to distribute the grease. It works perfectly well, does the same job as greasing the spring before you put it in. You never grease the spring before you put it in there. It's, it's just dangerous. Don't do that. You want a nice dry spring and a nice dry spring barrel so your gloves, your nice heavy leather gloves, will grip the metal firmly and you can get that spring in there with a minimum of difficulty. All right? So you got to be careful with that. Anyway, you want to check the rotation of the spring before you grease it. This way you know for sure it's in there like it should be and then you go ahead and grease it and bolt everything back, screw everything back together and go on from there. Well, that grease is nasty. It looks nasty anyway. It really isn't. What you're looking at is basically Vaseline with black graphite powder in it. That's what they used in the old days. We have better alternatives today. I mean, even the cheapest grease we have today is still going to be better quality than what they had in 1924 when this motor was made. And there'll be endless fights over what's the best oil, what's the best grease. It's all nonsense, people. It, it's, it, they all work. Now, the only thing I'm going to say about that is that when you have an original spring that's a smaller one like this, doesn't really apply to the bigger machines with heavy springs, but a smaller one like this, you're going to want to use a light grease, like white grease or something like that. And I cut it with STP engine oil lubricant just to thin it out a little bit because a weaker spring can be held up somewhat by thick grease, especially in the cold. It'll reduce the power of the spring. So you want to go with a nice light grease. Now, for a brand new spring, I go with the same high-pressure lubricant that I use on uh, my automobiles, which cost many, many, many times what this motor does. <laughs> so, if I trust them on that, I certainly trust them on this. They have anti-wear lube, you know, additives, anti-corrosion additives, all things that 1920s grease did not have. There's super lubes, all kinds of stuff in there. Magic space age technology. Take advantage of it. Some people still like to use the old Vaseline and graphite mix. That's fine. You can. You know, there's no rule says you can't. But you do have better alternatives. And sometimes things like uh, black graphite uh, powder can be a little hard to get. You can still get graphite grease, though. You can. High pressure graphite lube is still around. Except I just hate putting black grease on anything because then it looks dirty. You know, and it gets everywhere. I mean, look at the tabletop. It's spiders everywhere. My hands. It gets all over. It's extremely dirty grease. It does work very well, but extremely dirty. But for something like this, this is going to get a white grease with the lube. Because I, even though that spring does look pretty good, I know it's going to minimum be 50 to 60 years old. And it may be a little weak, so I'm, I'm going to err on the side of caution and go with the lighter grease for this. If this was a Victor Patrol at a 9, the 9th with uh, two very strong springs in there, I would think nothing of putting a red or a blue, you know, high pressure, or the green high pressure grease in there. It's fine. There's no brass in there that it's going to damage. Now, that's another issue. Certain br brass and bronze gears can be degraded by modern greases. This is more of a problem with automobiles that might have brass or bronze fittings in their transmissions or rear ends than it ever will be for a Victrola. This is not, you know... An internal combustion engine or a high-speed gearbox you're not going to have to worry about that I have to use a special lubricant in the winch on my army truck because there's a big bronze gear in there or brass I'm not sure what it is that can be degraded by exposure to certain kinds of late model style modern style greases that is not an issue here not an issue at all you know the only issue you're gonna run into is if you don't grease them because then you're gonna have increased wear but something like white grease, that's not going to hurt anything. That's fine. You know, and you're not putting too much grease on anything with brass anyway. Things like your governor, the governor right there, 
that's mostly going to be oil, not grease. You don't grease the, uh, the friction leathers or the governor shaft. You just put a little bit of grease here, just a little bit on that, those, uh, that gear, that thread right there. Don't get carried away. A little goes a long way. Like I said, this is not an internal combustion engine. It's not spinning at uh, three, 4,000 RPM. It, you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Most of your grease is going to be here. It's going to be in the spring barrel and on these larger gears. Where's, what did I do with the motor? You know, with the bigger gears on the teeth around here. That's a steel gear, there's no problems there. So you want to be careful with that. And the other thing to be careful with is your ball bearings. See this little cap right here? The motor is upside down on the table. But in this little cup, there is, where is it? Right there. That's the ball bearing that goes under your, your shaft, the main shaft right here. Goes on the bottom of this, in here, that big ball bearing, you must have it there. You cannot omit that. You can lose it if you're not careful. In these two caps, these two little caps here, those are the bearing caps that go on either end of the shaft for the governor. Inside of each one, I don't know if you can really see that. Yeah, probably, yeah, you can. Right in there, you see it. That's a ball bearing, a tiny ball bearing, also critical. It must be there and it must be freed up. They're stuck in there right now. What I'm going to do with these is, is leave them soaking in solvent and shake them around a little bit, and they will come loose. They'll come out of there. You might have to pick at them a little bit with a little pick, get in there and move them around. Once they're out, clean it up a little bit with a little swab or a pick or something. Make sure there's no dirt in there, although the solvent will take care of most, if not all, of that. Put them back in with a dab of oil and then seal them all over the top with some grease. That's to keep the ball bearing in there when you're reassembling it so it doesn't fall out when you're putting the governor back in. The one with the groove, you see the one with the groove? That will go here. That's the one that goes closest to the governor, where the governor it will be spinning, where the governor gears are, right here, on any Victrola motor. The one with the groove is here. The groove is simply to center it. So the set screw will set down in that groove and lock it in place. It is not adjustable. This side, this side, which is the longer, or sometimes they're the same size, but this side has no groove. This is adjustable. That's how you adjust the lash on the governor, is by moving that bearing in and out. And the trick on that is you want a little tiny bit of movement, just a little bit. Not a lot and not too little. Too little will bind it, too much it'll be slapping around. Just want a little bit. This is something that comes with experience, but you'll get the hang of it once you've done a number of these motors, and I will show you when the motor is reassembled. Well, there you go. There's a look at the, uh, the Victor Victrola 35. This was the first of this generation of motors. The Victor Victrola, Victor Victrola 35 had the first of this style. Now, Victor would use pancake motors like this in various sizes and shapes that all looked like this up until the end of the company in 1929. They would use it in portables, not in the big tabletops or any of the tabletops or floor machines. They had the regular style motors. Well, there you go. There's all the pieces and parts. Now, of course, I'm going to have to scrub them all in solvents to get rid of all the grease and the nasty stuff and get it all back together. Okay.